Hello, and welcome to 10 for 10, 10th 10 or News, your weekly dose of 10th Amendment news, in 10 minutes or so, from us here at the 10th Amendment Center. Today is February 18th, 2013. My name is Michael Bolden, and thank you for tuning in. This week's episode is made possible in part by the 10th Amendment Center Membership Program. Proudly wear the 10th or label with pride and become a card-carrying member of the 10th Amendment Center. Get all the details online at members.10thamendmentcenter.com. And now the news. The nullification movement is hitting the mainstream. Recently, a national poll reported that 72% of Americans believe that the federal government should simply back off of Washington State and Colorado and let the people there make their own decisions in regards to marijuana, even though federal law still claims that plant is illegal. And dozens of nullification bills on issues across the political spectrum have been introduced in states around the country. Just this week, a number of those bills are up for important hearings and votes. In Tennessee, Senate Bill 0250, that's SB 0250, the Second Amendment Preservation Act, was introduced by state senators May Beavers. It would nullify federal attempts to ban, regulate, or restrict ownership, transfer, possession, or manufacture of a firearm, a firearm accessory, or ammunition within the state of Tennessee. It's up for an important committee hearing and potential vote on Tuesday, February 19th. Tennessee residents are strongly encouraged, strongly encouraged to contact committee members in support of this bill, SB 250, and to attend the public hearing in person. Get all the details and contact information at 10thamendmentcenter.com slash Tennessee SB 250. Again, that's 10thamendmentcenter.com slash Tennessee SB 250. In Wyoming, House Bill 104, that's HB 104, the Firearms Protection Act will have a hearing and vote in the State Senate Judiciary Committee on Wednesday, February 20th, at 8 a.m. The bill already passed the House in recent weeks and just needs to be approved by the Senate to move forward towards law. The bill provides that, quote, any federal law which attempts to ban a semi-automatic firearm or to limit the size of a magazine of a firearm or other limitation shall be unenforceable in the state of Wyoming. The bill also proposes felony charges for federal agents who violate the state law. In Missouri, SJR 14 is a proposal for a state constitutional amendment. It would elevate under the Missouri Constitution and in the state courts the right to keep and bear arms to an inalienable right where it should have been all along. And it would obligate the state to protect your right to keep and bear arms from all infringements, including from the federal government. SJR 14 is up for an important committee hearing on Tuesday, February 19th at 3 p.m. For more details and to uh, find out how you can get active to support that bill, visit the Missouri First website at www.mofirst.org. And in Kansas, House Bill 2199, HB 2199, that's the Second Amendment Preservation Act for the state of Kansas, will also have a hearing on Tuesday the 19th. It's in the committee, House Committee on Federal and State Affairs, and the hearing will be held at 9 a.m. Activists are strongly encouraged to attend and show support for the bill, which would nullify all federal acts, laws, treaties, orders, rules, and regulations which violate the Second Amendment. To track the status of all states considering such legislation, visit tracking.10thamendmentcenter.com slash Second Amendment. Also this week, a number of states will have hearings and votes on the Liberty Preservation Act, a bill to nullify NDAA kidnapping powers. That's what the federal government refers to as indefinite detention. In Colorado, the State House Committee on State Veterans and Military Affairs will hold a vote on HB 13-1045. The new hearing is scheduled for today at 1.30 p.m. in room LSBA at the State Capitol Building. 
In Washington State, a hearing is being held for HB 1581, the Washington State Liberty Preservation Act. The bill would not only ban state participation in the indefinite detention scheme of the NDAA, but would also criminalize anyone, federal or state, who attempts to do so within that state. The hearing is set for Thursday, February 21st. And also on Thursday that same day, both Maryland and New Hampshire will hold hearings on NDAA nullification bills in those states. In Maryland, House Bill 558 will be heard in Annapolis in the State House Committee on Health and Government Operations. The hearing will be at 1 p.m. And in New Hampshire, State Representative Dan Itza's House Bill 399 will be heard in the Committee on Health and Government Operations at 10 a.m. in Room 203. In both states, activists are strongly encouraged to attend these public hearings to show support and to encourage committee members to vote yes on the bills. A yes vote will ensure that the legislation gets a hearing and debate in the full House, which is the next step required for passage into law. For more details on NDAA nullification bills in these and other states, visit tracking.10thamendmentcenter.com slash NDAA. Again, that's tracking. .10thamendmentcenter.com slash NDAA. In Oklahoma, a hearing is being held in the, in the State House on Representative Mike Ritz's House Bill 1021. This bill would declare the entire Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, to be unconstitutional, null, and void within the state of Oklahoma. It would also make it the duty of the state legislature to enact any and all measures which may be necessary to prevent the enforcement of the federal act within the boundaries of that state. The hearing for HB 1021 will be on Tuesday the 19th in the House Committee on Public Health. The hearing was originally scheduled for last Tuesday, but was delayed. A vote is likely, and activists are strongly encouraged to contact members of the committee to urge a yes vote on HB 1021. For more details, Visit 10thamendmentcenter.com slash Oklahoma HB 1021. Again, that's 10thamendmentcenter.com slash Oklahoma HB 1021. There you'll find the contact information for all the committee members and details on attending the hearing. And in closing this week, tomorrow, February 19th, 2013, is the 71st anniversary of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt signing Executive Order 9066. This was the order which resulted in 120,000 Japanese Americans, 11,000 German Americans, and 3,000 Italian Americans being indefinitely detained for three plus years in American concentration camps here on American soil. We believe this black stain on American history should be a great motivator for people of all political beliefs to say never again. It's the reason for many people to take a strong stand in opposition to NDAA indefinite detention today, as such indefinite detention has already happened in this country. And tomorrow on February 19th, in remembrance of this sad anniversary, we'll be featuring a powerful personal story about it on the homepage of our website at 10thamendmentcenter.com. Our communications director, Mike Meharry, recently interviewed Washington State Senator Bob Hasegawa, who has introduced a bill in his state to nullify NDAA indefinite detention. In that interview, Bob told the story of how his entire family was indefinitely detained under FDR's order. They were forced out of their homes and made to live in horse stalls and barracks for over three years. They never knew if they'd be released or not. Please visit 10thamendmentcenter.com tomorrow to learn more about this powerful story and take action to prevent it from ever happening in this country again. And that covers our report here today on 10 for 10, 10th or News. Get 10 minutes or so of 10th Amendment News every week from the 10th Amendment Center. Watch 10th or News every week at youtube.com slash 10th Amendment Center and view all our archive shows over at news.10thamendmentcenter.com. My name is Michael Bolden. 
Thanks again for tuning in.